Today I'm going to show you how to create enemy AI that follows your player around the screen. I'm not the greatest artist, so for this video I'm going to download some free top-down characters from the asset store to use as my enemies. I'll include a link to this asset pack in the description below if you want to follow along. Then quickly I'll open these assets in Photoshop and export each limb as a sprite into Unity. Once in Unity, I can add them to a parent game object and rearrange them so they look like an enemy. I'll even animate the limbs a little bit so it looks like this object is walking. And then I'll do the same thing for a player object. And once that's complete, we can get started on writing our AI follow script. In order to make our enemies follow our player, we must calculate two things every frame. The first is we need to calculate the direction our player is compared to our enemy. We can do this simply by subtracting the position of our player minus our enemy. And then secondly, we need to take this direction value and use it to calculate the degrees of our angle, so we know how much to rotate our enemies so they always face our player. So let's go ahead and create a script called Enemy by right-clicking in our project window and selecting Create, and then select C Sharp Script. Let's just go ahead and label this Enemy, and then let's drag it onto our Enemy Game Object, and then open it in the editor. So the first thing we want to do is calculate the direction our player is compared to our Enemy Object. In order to do that, we need to create a reference for our player object in the script. So up at the top, write public transform player. Then in our update function, which is executed every frame, let's calculate our direction by writing vector3 direction equals player.position minus transform.position. Since the script is attached to our enemy object, we can use transform.position to reference this object's position. To see this in action, let's write debug.log and in parentheses write direction. Then back in Unity, go ahead and drag our player object into the inspector where it says player. Then if we press play and move our player object around the screen, we will see in real time the distance our object is compared to the player object. The closer we drag our player, the smaller the numbers become. So now let's go ahead and use that value to rotate and move our enemy in real time. In this example, we are going to use rigid body to move and rotate our objects. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and add a rigid body component to our object. Since we are working with 2D assets, make sure you select Rigid Body 2D. Then go ahead and set the gravity to zero. And then back in our code, let's create a reference for our Rigid Body 2D up at the top by writing private Rigid Body 2D, and let's just call this RB. Then in our start function, let's define RB by writing RB equals this dot get component and then Rigid Body 2D. This now lets us use RB to manipulate the movement and rotation of our object. So the first thing we can do is rotate our object in the direction of our player. To do this first, we need to convert our direction into degrees. For this, we will use a math function called aton2, which basically calculates the angle between zero and a vector two point. In our case, this means calculating the angle between our enemy object and the player object. You might have remembered us using this formula in our point and shoot tutorial to rotate our turret to face the direction of the mouse pointer. So let's go ahead and write float angle equals math f dot aton2 and in parentheses write direction dot y for the first parameter and then direction dot x for the second parameter. This then outputs a value in radians, so we need to convert this number to degrees, which can easily be achieved by multiplying by math f dot rad2 degrees. And then with our angle value defined, we can then set our rigid body's rotation by writing rb dot rotation equals angle. And now when we go back into Unity and press play, we should see our enemy rotate to face our player. But as you can see in this example, it's not quite working right. The reason for this is that our enemy needs to be facing the right direction. If your object doesn't do this naturally, there is an easy fix. All you have to do is simply create an empty game object inside your enemy object, and then drag all the limbs inside it and rotate it to face the correct direction. So now when I press play, my enemy is always correctly facing my player object. So then naturally the next thing to do is to have this object move towards the player. For this we are going to use our standard move character function. So firstly up at the top let's define a vector 2 called movement. Then in our update function let's set movement to equal direction. Now if you watch my other videos about movement you'll remember that we want this value to be between negative 1 and positive 1. So in order to do that without any complicated formulas we can just write direction.normalize and this built-in function will do the rest. And now that we know where we want our enemy to move, let's go ahead and put it in motion. So let's create a new function called moveCharacter, and for a parameter, let's pass a vector2 called direction. 
Then simply we just need to write rb.movePosition and in parentheses put transform.position plus and then in another parentheses put direction times move speed times time.delta time. What this will do is take our current position and move it in the direction that we specified, which happens to be the direction of our player object. To control the speed of this movement, we multiply by move speed, which we should define above. So up at the top, let's write public float move speed equals 5. You can alter this number to make your enemies move slower or faster. And then since our direction is a vector 2 and our transform is a vector 3, we might be getting an error when we try to add the 2. To fix this, let's convert our transform into a vector 2 by writing vector 2 in parentheses in front of it. And then the last thing we need to do is declare our move character function. Since we are dealing with physics, we should do this in a fixed update function. So go ahead and write void fixed update and then put move character and use movement as the parameter. Now if we press play in Unity, we should see that our enemy follows our player object. And no matter where our player moves around the screen, this enemy will now follow. It will even work if we clone this enemy and add multiple enemies throughout the scene. And now that you understand how to create enemy AI, see if you can build a character controller to spawn and shoot down enemies like this. I'm not going to cover these topics in this video, but I'll make this project available for download on Patreon for anyone who is interested. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future ones.